Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to cover Vercel feature flags. Vercel has recently released their flags SDK which allows you to enable feature flags on your applications. That means that you don't really need to use any commercial solutions such as launch darkly in order to be able to support feature flags. You can now do that using just Vercel and a couple more bits that I'm going to cover through in the video. So with no further ado, let's get started with creating a Next.js application. So let's go ahead and install the Next.js application. So I'm going to type npx create-next-app. I'm going to name the folder vercel-feature-flags and I'm going to use TypeScript for this Next.js application because we are going to write the code in TypeScript. Now you have to go through some of these questions. I'll hit yes for almost everything except for the alias bit which I've selected no right here. I'm going to wait for the installation to complete and once the installation has been completed I'll just open it in my IDE. Before we begin writing any code we have to install the feature flags toolkit for Next.js that is called Flags SDK. In order to do this I'll open the terminal and I'm going to type npm install and the package name is adversel slash flags and this is going to install the flags SDK into our project. Now let's go ahead and create a feature flag. So we are going to head over to app and go to the page.tsx file and we're going to delete all the boilerplate that's been created here. I'm just going to leave a plain div. I'm going to create a class name that is going to be just a bit of padding so that things are a bit more centered and easier to view. And what I'm going to do is create a button, just a simple button that says click me and maybe just add a bit of tailwind so we can make it be just a bit more padding and just a background of blue and that should be just enough. And what we want to do with this particular button is hide it behind a feature flag. So if the feature flag is enabled then this button will show up. If it's not enabled then we won't show this button. So let's go ahead and create a very simple feature flag. What I'm going to do is I'm going to define a constant and I'm going to call it button feature flag. And what it's going to be is actually a function because this is how for cell flags SDK works. So your feature flags are actually functions that also perform some processing in terms of identifying who interacts with the feature flag and how it makes its decision to flip the value. Now, Let's just use flag and import flag from the cell flags next. And inside we're going to pass an object of type definition that is going to be containing a key that is called button feature flag. You can name it however you want. And I'm going to have a function that's called decide, which is responsible for processing and returning the feature flag value. And it's going to be just a function. And I'm going to set it to true and also include a default value to be false. Now we can also add a generic right over here next to the flag. We can make sure that the flag returns a boolean because flags also have the ability to return strings and numbers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this feature flag out of the home function. I'm going to place it here and what I'm going to do inside the home function is call the flag. So I'm going to type const flag is await button feature flag and we're going to call the function. Now you might see a wait complaining because you're only allowed to use wait within asynchronous functions. All you have to do is update the export default function to be async function and this should work just fine. And finally, we can add flag here and use a double ampersand to render this button conditionally. And this should be the most basic implementation of a feature flag using the flags SDK. So now let's go ahead and launch our Next.js instance. I'm going to open the terminal again and I'm going to type npm run dev and that should launch an instance of Next.js locally. And we can see the button just right here. It says click me. Now what if we wanted to update it so that it doesn't render the click me button? If we head back to the code and we change the decision factor here and return false instead of true, then save and refresh then we can see that the button doesn't show up anymore. Now we previously defined a default value that is set to false. So why did we have to update the decide function instead? Well, that's because the default value will only ever replace the value that comes from the function decide if the function returns undefined. So in this case, if the function did return undefined here, 
then the default value would have been false. So you can't really explicitly return undefined because that is reserved in case the decide function fails for some reason. So it's always good to have a default value as a backup in case your decision function is not available. There are a few more attributes that we can use with the feature flag with using the flags SDK. One of them is the description, which could help explaining what the feature flag does. In this case, we can just say flips the button visibility. And you can also have the origin attribute, which you can specify where did this flag can be managed at. So you can add a URL here. There's also the option for an adapter, which allows you to integrate with other feature flag SDKs such as Launch Darkly, but I'm not going to cover this in this tutorial. And also Identify, which allows you to provide an evaluation context which can be passed down to the decide function. A very good use case for Identify is to pass down user information to the decide function in order to conditionally flip the feature flag depending on the type of the user or the user ID or whatever other criteria you feel like is relevant in your case. So let's take a look at this example. Let's say that in the Identify function, what we do have is actually user ID. So what I can do is I can return a user object that contains the ID and it can be any ID, this is just for demonstration purposes. And then, as mentioned, you can actually access that within the decide function. And you can do that by referencing entities. So entities is the object that is made available to you within the decide function to reference whatever you pass down from identify. So in this case, what we can do is check if the user ID is test. So we can reference that using entities.user.id is test. In case the user is test, then we're going to return true, otherwise false. Now, let me save and head back to the browser. And I can see that the click me button is shown here. Now, if you go back to the code and for the sake of the argument, let's say that you only wanted to show the button to a specific user. And that user is not called test, but it's called test2. Now, if I hit save and head back to the browser again, I can see that the button is now disappeared. And this is just one of the examples of how you can manage feature flags by presenting them to a specific subset of your users. Now, Flags SDK has another concept called dedupe, which allows you to prevent duplicate work using the function dedupe. So pretty much any function wrapped in a dedupe will only ever allow you to run the code once for the same request with the same runtime and the same arguments. Now let's go ahead and create an example feature flag. Let's make something simple, such as a random number. So I'm going to create a function that is going to be called random number flag. And instead of using the flag method, we're going to use the dedupe method. And inside the dedupe, we are going to return a random number using math.random. And then inside our home function, I'm going to create two or three random numbers. So we can create random number one, and it's going to be a weight random number flag. And I'm going to duplicate this two or three times like this. So we're going to have four different numbers. And previously, if we used the normal flag method, you would probably expect that we would get four different random numbers. However, with dedupe, all these four random numbers should be exactly the same. And we can see it by creating an example here. So let me create a div. And then I'm going to include all those numbers inside here. Random number one, random number two, random number three, and random number four, like this. Now, if we head back to the page and we refresh, we can see that all of these numbers, they are exactly the same as it is expected of the dedupe function. Now, you may wonder why would you want to do that? Well, a very good use case is when you want to generate random IDs that are consistent across the board. It's very useful when you try to experiment with A-B tests and you want to link those sessions to particular users. And that's where you would use the dedupe function instead of just the flag. Now, in case you get any issues with the function not running well or correctly, that means you probably need to set up an environment variable that is called flag secret. To do that, just create a .env at your root folder and then name the environment variable flags underscore secret and generate a secret. I'm going to show you how you can generate the secret. So open your terminal and then let's type node-e and then inside the console log crypto.randombytes32.2string base64 URL. So use that command 
and it will generate you a 32 character string that you can use as your flag secrets. Now, once you've done that, we need to create a GitHub repository and push it to Vercel and deploy our Next.js instance. So let's go ahead and create our new repository. I'm going to call it Vercel-feature-flags. I'm going to make it private and I'm going to click create repository. And I'm going to copy this commands right over here and then head over to the terminal and type git add a and then paste the commands here and it's going to push everything to the repository. And if I go back to the browser and I refresh the repository, I can see everything being deployed here. Now, the next step is to go to Vercel. Once we go to Vercel, on the right hand corner, we can see add new button. We press on that button and press on project. And then assuming you have already connected your repository, you just simply press import on the newly created repository. It will automatically detect that it is a Next.js project. And in our environment variables, we are going to add flags underscore secret. And I'm going to head back to my IDE and I'm going to copy my secret here. Then head back to the Excel dashboard and paste the value inside and then press on the deploy button. So this is going to deploy the project that we've just built to our cell. And then we can make use of the flags features using the toolbar. So this is pretty much it for this tutorial. If you wish to learn how to update the feature flags using the Vercel toolbar, then make sure to subscribe and I'll release the video very, very soon. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.